in your effort to release yourself from the material sense of life, you may have had a measure of success up to now, and unquestionably you've also had a measure of failure. The reason for that failure becomes more apparent when you are willing to face that which is expected of you in order to attain full illumination. Now perhaps this passage in the Acts will give you a very good understanding of what is expected of you. A certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife, also being privy to it, had bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, and kept back part of the price. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Now all this man did was sold his property, it was his. And according to the custom of the new way of life, in the pre-Christian era, when they were going out by twos, these little communes gathered and then took the purchase price and laid it at the apostles' feet and said, this is for the work. Now Ananias sold his home, but he kept back something. And Peter caught him at it, and he had the temerity to say to Ananias, how come you're doing this? How come you're not giving it all to this commune? Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Now try to see beneath the surface of that that we're not talking about houses and we're not talking about money. The house is the consciousness, and Ananias has sold his house, but he's keeping back a part of the price. He's trying to live in part of the old consciousness as well as the new. He's not willing to clean house all the way. What actually is he holding on to? He still believes in mortality. He still believes in materiality. He is still fooled by the appearances of this world. He is still making human decisions. And of course you know that most of us are still making human decisions. And this then is the lie to the Holy Ghost that we are not able to fully renounce the belief in a physical universe. And the reason we are not is multifold, fear, world mind, hypnosis, covetousness, ignorance of truth. You might sum it up as we are interested in what is going to happen to us in this earth span. That's where we're placing all our bets, on this earth span. We're placing all our bets on that which happens in time. And time is where nothing happens. Now we want to get to the bottom of that which forces us, like Ananias, to cling to those sacred beliefs of material possessions. 
of physical selves, of human life spans, and to come beneath the surface to learn how to erase the illusions of the hypnosis. Peter goes on, while it remained, was it not thine own, and after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. It is God who has said to us, Be perfect as your Father. Every acceptance of imperfection is an illusion in time. Now, last week we looked at the box and we saw that it was made of atoms. That is, if we accepted science's word. And we saw further that atoms can be burned in a forest fire. Atoms can be made into bullets and bombs that kill. And we decided then that atoms weren't created by God. But the very same atoms that were not created by God were the substance of the box. And so we knew that the box was not created by God. And finally, because it was not created by God, we knew we were looking at an illusion. That our sense of touch could make contact with the illusion, and therefore the sense of touch was as much an illusion as the box itself. Now, it's not a very simple illusion. It's a combination of many illusions. We have the sender of illusions. We have the thing or the condition that is the illusion. And we have the witness of the illusion. You cannot change the sender. You can change the thing. And this, is, this has been man's trap. He's busy changing the thing. And because he doesn't understand the conditions that brought forth the thing, he hasn't learned that he must change not the sender or the thing, but he must change the witness. He must change his consciousness. Now let's look at the box again and see another element that was missing. We saw a physical box made of atoms. But what made it a box? It didn't fall out of the sky as a box. Something made it a box. Someone had to have an idea that he wanted to take those pieces of wood and make them into a box. And that idea is not the visible box. It had to precede the visible box. Similarly, the architect has to design the house before the bricks are laid, before the house appears. The bricks don't make the house, do they? The idea behind causes the bricks to be placed a certain way. The idea is invisible, and the result of that invisible idea is the house. The idea is invisible, and the result of that invisible idea is the box. Now we want to see that that invisible idea is also an illusion. That invisible idea is not the idea of God. It is a man-made idea. And from that invisible idea springs a visible illusion. Now when you look at physical things that are not made by man through his ideas, you're still looking at that which in the visible is in any effect. But behind that tree that grows there, there is an idea. The seed isn't the beginning of the tree any more than the brick is the beginning of the house. The idea behind the seed like the idea behind 
the brick and behind the box is also part of the illusion and that idea is in the cosmic mind the cosmic mind is counterfeiting it takes that which is the original divine idea and counterfeits it and then it places it out in time the first illusion is not in time and the second illusion comes into time and always time gives you a picture that is ever changing the house deteriorates in time the flower grows and then finally folds up in time the human being comes into birth in time and walks out into the grave in time part of the illusion of the atom is the visible picture that occurs in time and if you are going to learn how to lay the axe at the root you've got to learn to overcome the illusion of time as well as the illusion of the atom now science has given us many interesting things about time on a physical basis which do not go far enough for example we know that in outer space time is different in fact science has already calculated that when we live in outer space time will be so different that we will age in a different way they've actually mathematically calculated that if you could learn to travel at the speed of light you would never age if you could learn to travel quicker than the speed of light you could leave today and arrive yesterday they have actually had mathematical equations to prove that if you went let us say to one star a certain distance away and your twin brother at the same age as you both 20 let's say went to another star twice the distance away if you both arrived home at the same time he would be 69 years younger than you and the reason is he would have been in a different time segment than the time segment on earth and i say this doesn't go far enough this is all presupposing the existence of time now let's go to the crucifixion of jesus and watch carefully from another aspect what was happening when the body could not be held in a tomb you were learning then that the burial of the body was a picture in time and the one who steps forth after the burial and says here i am is showing you that what was touched in time was not reality he had discovered something other than passing time and having discovered it you could only bury a concept in passing time you cannot bury the christ because the christ lives now not in time and you must learn to accept that i am the child of god the christ you can and must learn to live now and not in time ananias knew nothing of these things but he was a living symbol of what happens when you still try to live in both worlds successfully you and i cannot live in this world and in the kingdom of heaven on earth we cannot live in an earth span and a permanent life at the same time and as long as even one degree of your thought or interest or purpose is in some way devoted to your earth span you are sacrificing your permanent life you're making a decision right there that you are going to reincarnate you are not sowing to spirit 
you are sowing to the flesh and actually you are sowing to the time picture now let's go to Santa Cruz if you live there and you're female you're worried you're worried because there are things going on that endanger your life now when we had our meeting in January the last meeting it was about world work and if we had been continuing our world work particularly if we lived in Santa Cruz and this condition arose that has risen there now our world work would be to see the nothingness of that which threatens to be murder all these bodies all these killings but what is happening let us do our world work there right now let us see that our teaching is not about a tomorrow our teaching is now a very practical now which can emancipate us from that which the world calls killing and let's see it from a new aspect an aspect that we hadn't introduced at that January meeting the aspect of now and the aspect of passing time we see a ship it moves on the water we accept it it comes at a certain pace it's coming closer and now the wind rises and howls and the waters rage and we accept it and now the waters overflow and the ship is swallowed up and we accept it we have been watching a time picture and that is the only place where the ship was swallowed up whether its name is the Poseidon adventure or the SS Titanic or a little canoe you're watching a time picture of Adam Now you, as the Spirit of God, do not live in time. Your timeless self, your spiritual self, exists in a permanent universe in which all imperfection is impossible. And when you are in the consciousness of that spiritual self, abiding in it, rejecting all that denies it, you are accepting the reality of God being. You are accepting the nowness of God. And you can learn to look at that picture in time of the ship at sea, or the picture in time of a disease, or the picture in time of any form of discord, or the picture of time of murder in a certain city. And you can see that you have by acceptance fallen into the trap that God is not now that becomes the belief of one who thinks these things are happening and who continues to let them appear to happen without standing in the nowness of being now let's go all the way where is Santa Cruz it's a collection of sense impressions you could have started with a box and seen it's not there you could have built up to 500 boxes you could have built up to a city there is no Santa Cruz it's just a place on the map it's just a physical appearance my kingdom says the father is not in Santa Cruz and so we either accept the word of God or not and if we reject the word of God then we're living in a godless city and if we're living in a godless city we can continue to see more of the same but let's get out of a godless city and let's live in God let God be the city let's accept then that God is always present that God is now 
and that the only reason we can see time pictures such as are reported, such as are causing fear and some hysteria, is because we're not conscious of the nowness of God. The nowness of God is the spirit of your own being. I in the midst of the Almighty. Beside me there is no other. Be still and know that I am God. Where the spirit of the Lord is realized as identity, there is fullness of joy, there is liberty. There is freedom, there is peace. So do we continue rejecting God or accepting God? Now when you accept, ask yourself if God lives in a minute or an hour or a day or a week. Is Christ living in time now? Or is Christ living in eternity? We know that Christ lives in the allness of time or eternity. We know that Christ in you is now living in the allness of time or eternity. Now let's take a film a moving picture film. It runs about 90 minutes. It's in a box. It contains the entire movie. You can take that film out, put it in the projector, and in 90 minutes you can run off the entire movie. But everything in that movie is already in the film that you have now. Today we want to see that everything in the world is already in the film that you have now. There is nothing going to appear in this world ever except that which is already completed in the kingdom of God. The eternal self, the eternal picture is finished. And in the playing of it into this level of visibility we are not seeing the reality of it. If we see the flood, we're not seeing what is in the reality of it. If we experience the disease, we're not experiencing what is in the reality of it. All that is in the eternal now is perfect. And as you see the replay in time, you are not seeing the reality of it. You are seeing the mental shadow. You are not seeing what God has created. You are seeing the illusions in time. You are seeing time exposures that have no validity. The entire ocean is made of atoms just as the box was. The ship is made of atoms just as the box was. The illusion of the ship atoms, the illusion of the ocean atoms makes the illusion of the drowning or swallowing up of the ship by the water. A Christ walks out on the water and says, Peace be still, because he knows what is in the film. He is already finished, and he is not accepting the time picture. He knows what is in eternity, he is already perfect, and though to human consciousness it unravels as imperfect, it is a shadow of thought never outside the mind. And so with killings and murders and rapes, when you can see that time itself is part of the cosmic illusion, you know there is no time in which these things can occur. And you must know it to find your freedom. You must find the center of rest. When time stops in your consciousness, heaven opens up. You can learn to stop time in your consciousness. 
go back to the truth that all that God made is good and ask yourself where anything ungood comes from. It is a spin out in time in a world mind. The sender is the world mind. The atoms are the mechanism. And then it spins out its false picture and we have a mechanical universe. And we live in it. And then to make sure that this mechanical universe appears to you, you are born into time. And then all you can see are the pictures in time. Now we're standing in the consciousness that there is no time. That time is standing still. And we'll hold that until we feel it. Let time for you part and reveal that the Red Sea was just an illusion in time. Let every disease in the world be known to be but an illusion in time. And when time stands still for you, you will find a glimpse, a flash, a direct recognition of the timeless universe. And every time this happens, that is illumination. That is when you stand in the eternal now instead of the passing picture of time. And that erases the illusion of the time picture because the only thing missing in your experience of reality is that awareness of the nowness of God it does not come mentally it comes when for you time is no more. Now, not in time, are we the sons or children of God. You cannot live in time and be a child of God. All that lives in time is the illusion of person, place, thing, and condition. Till you break the barrier of time, you are separated from divine law. Be still. mind in Santa Cruz is time it's, is, is God itself. The only mind there is the Spirit of God. And if that mind is not your mind, you're in duality. If you are accepting anything unlike the Spirit of God, you're in the mind in time which is not divine. Now you must learn to stand on truth. You must abandon all that is not truth. Ananias could not. All must be sold for the pearl of great price. Only eternity is here. To the cosmic mind, eternity is broken up into passing time. 
Only one is here. To the cosmic mind, the one is broken up into separated individuals. Separated individual things and individual conditions. All that the Father hath is thine if you're not in time. You are joint heirs with Christ if you're not in time. You and the Father are one if you're not in time. And finally you see that there is no time. Time is not passing. Time has never passed. No one is lying in a grave no one anywhere there is no such thing because there was no time in which it could happen Lazarus come forth to the picture in time you're dying but that's not true Lazarus God is now There can be no death because there's no time for death. There is only now. Now is God. And you must learn to stand in this truth. Not dwell in the sense misperception which goes along with the pictures of time. Stand ye still. Let the illusion of time go by, but stand ye in the knowledge that God now is all it is. And all that is not God now has no existence. Nothing may be withheld. You see that you cannot withhold at all. You cannot go into this meditation and come out a mortal being. You cannot believe there are mortals to be killed. You cannot believe there are imperfections where God is now. That's selling your house and holding back a portion of the price. What happened to Ananias? He fell dead. That's the meaning of when you hold back a portion of the house, a portion of the consciousness, and you believe that God is not now, and you believe that conditions can, can be existent, that are unlike God. You're not learning what Ananias had to be taught. That's the symbolism there. Now we are exactly as Christ, for that is our name. And you cannot see victims, and you cannot put yourself on the list as a potential one. There is only the nowness of God where you live, in your city. And only that Christ consciousness will erase the fraudulent picture in time. Each disciple had to learn that he was not a person in time, that he was a spirit which is now, the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. There was a place where Joel said we're all trying to live three lives. We have our past life. We talk about it. The things that happened that conditioned us. 
the problems we inherited, the mistakes we made. That's the one life. We try to live it now. Then we have this present life, which we try to live while we talk about our past problems, which contributed to the present. And then we try to live the past life and the present life and plan the future life. And he called that living three lives, where the only life there is is the now life, not in the flesh. Now we have a spiritual universe and against that we have the picture of mass murders and I'm repeating it until you're willing to drop the illusion of anything happening in a physical world and see it as a cosmic time exposure. When you do other things will fall into place. And one of them is that after years of trying to understand the body as an image, just like a plum falls off the tree, you suddenly realize that your body is only your mental projection from your own consciousness. You suddenly feel free of it, knowing you're not in it. You know that it is a projection of your consciousness. And you have found another level of yourself. Just as the architect's idea became the house, your consciousness is that which projects the form called body. And you learn how to live in that consciousness and improve it, refine it, stand on truth until that consciousness is Christ consciousness, not cosmic or world consciousness. And then because the consciousness that you are is that which puts forth the form, the Christ consciousness does not put forth a form that can suffer. You know by now that every suffering in the Bible, in Christ Jesus, was one which was accepted willingly, purposefully, whereas all could have easily been avoided. So many times the Master disappeared in the throng and could have at any time. But it was necessary at one time to make the great demonstration to us. So it is with you. You will discover then that the body is something you can watch knowing it is your workshop. It is not you. It is a place where you manifest that quality of your consciousness. And when your consciousness rests, not on the time pictures, not on the material pictures, not on physicalities, not on things or conditions, but when your consciousness sows to the spirit, which means rests in the knowledge that spirit is, and rests in the qualities of spirit, contemplating those qualities, that consciousness is reborn. Reborn out of time into now. And then the Son of God is realized as self. Now, when you're in the now consciousness, my grace is thy sufficiency, but not before. When you're in the now consciousness, you don't defend against anything. When you're in the now consciousness, you don't live as a human being does, by muscles and emotions and ideas. Suppose, for example, you want to communicate with a friend. How do you do that? You have to write him, or phone him, or travel to see him, and then you have to speak to him. All your communication is going to involve a very strange word, muscles. 
The muscles of your body make the communication. Your thought moves those muscles. Those muscles are atoms. Your thought moves what God did not create, and then the outward appearance is the movement of those muscles doing something like talking, sending a letter, dialing on the telephone. In order to communicate, you must use that which God did not create. All communication on the human level is therefore unreal. We talk about communication, but there isn't any except between two separate illusions. You cannot hold out one iota. In other words, you must come to spirit with a clean house. You must learn the luxury of selling all that you have a total, complete emancipation from the concept of atom, time, space, matter, and motion. Now Joel teaches us that now is tomorrow. And unless you're in now, your tomorrow is an unreal tomorrow. If you're in passing time, you're not reaching out for that which is a real tomorrow. Just like if you're in the idea of physical supply, you don't have real wealth. And so we struggle in make-believe todays and then move on into make-believe tomorrows. You see, materiality goes nowhere. It has the illusion of going somewhere until it comes smack up against the end of that material self. And there's nowhere to go. But when you're in now, now continues as now. In order to have what is called an afterlife, you first must have a life now. How can you have an afterlife if you don't have life now? And so the illusion that we are going to a place after this parenthesis is false. The only way to live in an afterlife is to live in the divine life now. And that now, which is this moment, continues to be itself. And you walk through the grave when you live in now. You walk through the disease when you live in now. You walk through the flood, the fire, and the famine. You walk through every human condition when you live in now, now. And to place your consciousness in the nowness of God and to hold it there is not only the protection given to you by divine law, but is the rebirth itself. To learn to live now in the now. Or to live a godless life, for God is never anywhere except in the now. That doesn't mean you can now go out late for appointments, or that you don't have a schedule. It means that you place your consciousness in the truth, in the kingdom of now. And then you'll find the added things include your arriving on time for your schedule, your fulfilling all of the so-called human responsibilities. The only difference is that instead of going out into the illusion of time, unprotected by reality so that you have to fear at this corner and fear at that corner and wonder what will happen before you get home again and what world conditions will do to you you are living in a law that is unbreakable 
in the law that now you are the child of God. That is accepting God's word. And that way is the way to accept the joint heirship in Christ. Now you'll find time is an invisible illusion, a subtle one, something you won't be conscious of unless you take it into contemplation into meditation and then you will find that the exercises given last week can be performed with a new ingredient you were told to see that your right hand isn't really your own you don't control it you can't keep it men in prison have right hands but they're moving their right hands not in the way they'd like to Men in hospital have right hands, but they're not moving their right hands the way they'd like to. Men who have lost their right arms in the war, they thought they had right arms and had control over them, but they found they didn't. Prisoners, men in certain vocations just despise their work. They're not using their arms the way they'd like to. They're forced to. You'll find the hand you cannot control is because it is not yours. And the body you cannot control is because it is not you. It has been misidentified. You are not even the consciousness that puts forth that body. But that's a deeper level of the illusion. Beyond the consciousness that puts forth the body is yourself. And that self is ever trying to come through the consciousness. And it makes a very strange statement if you're listening. The self of you says, if you do not let me come through your consciousness, I'm going to find another you. That's why we all pass out of this picture and come back in another me. The law is that your self must express and it will continue to seek a consciousness that accepts it. It will overturn you and overturn you and overturn you as it has before and will again until your consciousness accepts yourself. And then your self will govern the form that your consciousness projects. It will govern it from eternity and the law of eternity will prevail. And against the law of eternity, there is no other power. Wherever you live, if a condition such as Santa Cruz has arises where you are, your remedy is to know that no one is in your city save the self of God. That you've been looking at time exposures of atoms that come forth surface to our human sensibilities as matter in motion. And they have no more power than the mind that perceives them gives them. I did get a call from an individual who asked me what she should do about this. The advice I gave her was not as detailed as I've talked about so far, but I did give her something to work with that we should all do. And that is the realization that the only mind is the mind of God. And that which perceives what the mind of God does not perceive is a non-mind. It is seeing what cannot be there. The mind of God isn't sitting by watching these conditions. And the mind perceiving these conditions is a second or non-mind. It isn't your real mind. It isn't the mind of self. It is the mind of the false mortal consciousness. And because standing in truth is the only way 
that you erase time pictures, you must get out of the mind which perceives time pictures. The time pictures are false, but so is the mind that perceives them. And so you're giving up that sense of mind, that material mind. That's something else you've got to turn in after you sell the house. I have no mind to perceive imperfection. I have no mind to accept imperfection. The mind of God does not. The mind of Christ does not. The human mind that accepts imperfection is a mind that has no existence. It is not God's creation. And now give it up. Yield. Surrender that mind. Surrender the beliefs of that mind. Surrender the misperceptions of that mind. Not some of them, all of them. I can only perceive reality. All that I perceive that is unreal is in an unreal mind. The mind of God is your only mind. The mind of God is the only mind in your city. And now do you trust it? Are you among the one or two or three in your city who can trust the mind of God to know all that is happening there? Can you accept that mind in yourself? When you accept it in yourself, there is the flash or direct cognition. And you pierce the veil of time, the veil of atoms, the veil of space, the veil of matter. You pierce the layers of illusion. And time stands still. There is no time in the divine mind. It is all now. All that we call time, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, is but a passing parade of the eternal reality that exists now in the mind of God. All tomorrows, all yesterdays, this very moment, all exist as the one now in God. Stand there. When you touch the now, though it be an instant, you have touched all that will ever be in time. You've touched every tomorrow. You've touched every yesterday. You stand in the now with Christ. And the law of Christ prevails without might or power. You don't have to move muscles. You don't have to make plans. You're in the secret place where there is time no more. There has not been a healing by any master without the timeless recognition. There has not been a healing by Christ Jesus or Christ Joel or Christ anywhere at any time in this world that did not take place because they had passed the barrier of time. And that dissolved the time picture. As we pass the barrier of time, that dissolves the illusion of an earth span. The parenthesis is erased. Our consciousness is lifted into the realization that life is always now and never less, never diminishing. 
as the Father says, I change not. Now it's going to take quite a bit of practice on your part to keep this mind from spinning into time. It's a silence that few attain except by what would appear to be an accident or a stroke of luck and then they know not what has happened to them and it's all forgotten but in your case it's a matter of constantly learning to renounce every untruth so that you actually catch thought coming through the mind and as the thought comes to the mind and says flood, fire, murder, killing, threat, death it has to be accepted by that mind, doesn't it? As it comes to you, it must be met. Stop right there. Stop the time flow. And look at it. Look at the thought that comes as it comes. Catch it as it comes through. This whole world is coming through your sense mind. It isn't out there, it's coming through. Catch it as it comes through. And before you let it go any further, make it pass the test of truth. Is it true in God? Is it false in God? And if it's false in God, it is not true in you. Right there, you're breaking the time barrier, the karmic barrier, the space barrier, the material barrier. When Jesus could stand there and say, the prince of this world cometh and have no part in me, he was meeting it at the point where it comes through. Truth meets the lie. So you must know your truth to meet the lie. And don't make the mistake of knowing part truth, being unwilling to sell all thou hast. There is no mind to behold iniquity, a flood or a disease or a murder. There is no such mind. If you have that mind, you're in a non-mind and it makes you pay a price. kingdom of God, heaven on earth, is to be sought, but you cannot seek it if it doesn't exist, so it must exist. Seek ye first the kingdom. And so we found it as our own being. And every time you are able to hold this kingdom or spirit to be your own being, you must accept the spiritual mind. The mind that is too pure to behold iniquity. The mind that has light and no darkness. The mind that lives in the eternal reality. Not that out front thing called the changing pictures in time. Renew your acquaintance with that mind. 